Hello everyone and good morning from Exit 7A here in Jackson, New Jersey, home to Six Flags Great Adventure. This is a park I have been going to for my entire life and I'm excited to be back. El Toro is back up and running. I haven't been on that in years. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I love Nitro, Jersey Devil, the whole thing. Gonna hit the safari later on. I go by the legend, jump by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. And let's go to Six Flags Great Adventure. Let's kick off the tour of Six Flags Great Adventure with something that is fantastic to see. And that is El Toro reopen and run around the track. Uh, that's how we started our day here at Great Adventure. We rode three times, once in the front, twice in the back seat. And El Toro is awesome. It is fast, it is full of airtime. Obviously, it's had some problems the past couple years. It's been closed a lot, but hopefully those days are behind it. It was running pretty good. It was running really good. Very fast. Very fast, lots of airtime. Still has a couple moments, like noticeably, like towards the bottom of this turn where you're like, oh, all right, that, that's a little on the rougher side. But I love this ride. I've, I've been on 800 plus roller coasters, and out of all those, it's probably my second favorite wooden roller coaster. It's a good ride. It is so, so good. I forgot how intense it was. The very loud lift hill belongs to the Jersey Devil Coaster, Six Flags Great Adventure's newest roller coaster. It's an RMC single rail, so you sit one behind the other, and it's a really fun ride. Uh, pretty wild, not quite as wild as some of the other single rail roller coasters. It does flip you upside down a lot. Love that element there. Fun turnaround. When we rode, there was a herd of Canadian geese towards the end of the ride. A whole bunch of them, so uh, that got a thumbs up for me. Big blue and yellow roller coaster. That is Nitro. I love this ride. Six Flags most explosive roller coaster. And it's, uh, it's running really well. Um, I've always been a fan of this ride and it's running great. Lots and lots of airtime on it. Uh, we just rode in the back row. It also um, kind of goes out in the woods by the park. Part of it is in the woods, part of it is in the park's old boneyard area. But Nitro, Nitro's fantastic. Molly, one of your favorites in the park. It is my one of my favorites. El Toro and this one. Right now we're at Molly, I believe your least favorite ride in the park. Yep, I'm that not is a fan of these. The Joker, one of their 40 sprint coasters. So it'll flip you as you go around the track. And um, some rides you'll have more flips, some rides you'll have less flips. This one is located right on the park's lake, so it does have some some kind of nice views, but uh, I, 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 don't, I don't mind them, but yeah, you can flip quite a bit. Located all the way end of the boardwalk section of the park, you'll find Superman Ultimate Park Flight, the park's flying roller coaster. And this is a roller coaster that is, um, for the most part, pretty gentle. But what you're gonna see right here, what's known as the pretzel loop inversion, is really, really, really intense. You dive down, at that point you think your stomach's gonna fly out of your mouth. And then the rest of the ride is kind of a gentle flight. This roller coaster here going down the first drop, that is Green Lantern, the park's stand-up roller coaster. It is a big roller coaster. There's not that many more uh, stand-ups, are there, in the country? No, there's I believe four. Now five if you got the surf coaster in SeaWorld Orlando. This one is um not great, it does bang your head around quite a bit. Uh, like the first section's pretty good. The second half you definitely get more more into the rough stuff. Yeah, my ears hurt after riding. Yeah. So first half good, second half not so much. Would love if they could put those new modern stand-up coaster restraints on this thing. That would be a really good ride. But for now, a bit of ouch. Hanging out underneath the Green Lantern roller coaster, you have this fighter jet, which I am assuming is the old one that used to be out in front of the Mach 1 Right Stuff Simulator. I'm currently looking at what I feel like is the best flat ride at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth, a giant pendulum ride. I believe this is one of three that share the world record for the largest. This one, I think it's tied with the one at Magic Mountain and Fiesta Texas. And these rides are great. I think it's something like 150 or 180 feet into the air. Um, some spins feel wild and crazy, some spins feel less crazy, but they are an absolute blast. Like, look how high off the ground these people are getting. 
Oh man. Also, uh, the color scheme on this one, fantastic. Way up there. Always love a big Ferris wheel. And this is a big Ferris wheel. But you know what, I think I'm more happy about what's parked right next door. That is Mr. Six's bus. You should have worn your shirt. I should have worn my Mr. Six shirt. This ride's called Cyborg Cyberspin. Uh, might be the most interesting ride at Great Adventure to watch from off-ride because it's really a marvel of engineering. Look at that go. It spins and spins and then the spinning parts spin some more. Uh, I have been on these before. It definitely, it's more fun to watch than it is to ride. As when you're on it, it's not the most fun movement. But man, just watching this thing go is really impressive. Mesmerizing. Like you're riding in a gyroscope. I consider one of the more modern classics in Great Adventure is Batman the Ride. A roller coaster you'll find at a lot of Six Flags parks. But a very a very good layout, very intense little ride. It is intense. Uh, looks great, must have gotten recently painted. And I love that they have the 90s Batmobile parked out front of the ride. Inside of this warehouse building painted like the sky is the Dark Knight Coaster. Themed after the 2008 Batman movie, it is a gentle in the dark wild mouse with a kind of a neat pre-show. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, this is where the park's main shooting dark ride is, Justice League Battle for Metropolis. Um, I love these rides. They're, They're really cool rides. motion platform base. Um, one nitpicky thing, it used to have 3D, and now with well, now they got rid of the 3D glasses, so the targeting system on the guns is way off. It takes a while to get used to that. Yeah, but it, the ride's in good shape. Animatronics in there are working, fire is working, other effects are working. It was a, yep, so it, these, these are top notch ride. Not too bad at the old Justice League. Top 1%. Mauling, top 15%. Yeah, I'll take it. Air Jumbo is the park's Dumbo style spinner ride. This uh, used to be located over by King to Come, but is now over by the Ferris wheel and the Sky Screamer, which you can see going up there, their big 200 foot tall swing ride. Give a pretty good view of the park and the lake right nearby. Or for the tamer ones, the Jumbos. The thing they do on their skyscraper is you put on like a flying vest that is an extra cost thing and then they'll hook you in over there and you'll fly 200 feet in the air like Superman. Bit of a surprising bummer down for maintenance at the moment when we got over to this corner of the park is Medusa, the original floorless coaster. Now this was originally Medusa then became Bizarro for a few years. Now it's back to being Medusa once again. I love what they did with the sign. That looks the fantastic. The sign looks amazing. And what is probably the best looking ride at Great Adventure, this building is here to home to Skull Mountain, an indoor, in the dark, family friendly roller coaster. Um, I, you can see it actually going by right there. A bit of a gentler ride, but the, the facade with that waterfall, it's so cool. That big green roller coaster there, unfortunately not operating today, that is King De Ka, the world's tallest roller coaster. And attached to it, all those people are on Zoom and Jaro, which is the world's tallest drop tower. Uh, King De Ka is the second fastest roller coaster in the world, launching guests to 128 miles per hour. We're going up 456 feet tall. Um, should be reopening pretty soon. We have seen it testing throughout the day. We're in the Frontier Adventure section of the park and you can see the sky ride going. Coming around the bend here is going to be the runaway mine train. Uh, this corner of Six Flags Great Adventure has had those two rides for quite some time. I do like the sky ride a lot. It takes you from this section of the park over towards Skull Mountain and Nitro. And uh, they're themed with different M&M's colors. There is a uh, cool like a history sign out in front of the sky ride. It does talk about how it was originally built for the 64 World's Fair. 
Normally when people talk about the 64 World's Fair, they always talk about the stuff that ended up at Disney. Yes. Like Small World, the dinosaurs, and the Carousel of Progress. But well, the Skyride ended up at a different theme park. Buccaneer is the park's swinging ship, and this ride has been here for a very, very, very long time. One of the park's more family-friendly roller coasters, I believe it's Harley Quinn's Crazy Train, and it's got one of the longest trains you'll find. So, and with a, uh, putting that many guests on it, this one does not normally have too much of a line. But yeah, the train, it's it kind of mesmerizing to watch. It just, it just never ends. Right next to Skull Mountain is the Jolly Roger. This is one of the, the prettier looking flat rides in the park. The Swashbuckler is another one of the park's classic rides. And this, uh, Molly, this one would not be for you. No, no. I uh, ridden one of these once and said, nope, never again. Yeah, this is another one that's been at the park for quite some time. Right in the front of the park, you'll find Houdini's Great Escape, which is the park's madhouse ride. It's really cool. There's a whole themed story about Houdini returning from the dead, and there's a pre-show. It's a very themed ride for Six Flags. It is. And the, once you get to the ride itself, it's like you're on a bench, and there's a big spinning room. It's, uh, it's really cool. Um, this one, I've seen closed more than I've seen it open, so I was really happy to get back on this today. You were really excited about it. Over by Skull Mountain in the Skyway, they got a theme park staple. The bumper cars. The classic here at Great Adventure that I believe is yet to open for the season is the Sawmill Log Flume. Uh, yeah, it does not look like it's quite, uh, it doesn't look very close to opening either. No, not at all. Look at that. <laughs> um, it's a pretty good log flume. It goes out towards the lake and the woods. There's a big splashdown over there. I don't know if I've ever been on this one. I don't, I don't know. Here we have the Tango, which uh, moves pretty fast. If you haven't been on these, uh, they're a little bit more wild than they look. It's a fun little ride. How you spin and rock back and forth. Deja Vu is the park's scrambler ride. I actually really like the ride cars. They've got the old logo of Great Adventure on them, both the balloon and the rainbow. And then the rides logo, well, you remember the old Deja Vu roller coasters from Magic Mountain over Georgia or Great America? Absolutely, I do. Very, very similar logo. Different ride. We're currently in the Junior Thrill Seekers area, formerly known as Wiggles World. I actually knew that. There we go. In fact, I do. Home to now the Rajas Rickshaw. That used to be located over in the Golden Kingdom. The Bugaboos, which is a very cute little kid's ride. Yeah, that's cute. Um, there's also a plane ride, very similar to the Jumbos, called Air Safari. More kids' rides. You have Storm Chaser, very different from the Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. And the Barnstormer. Very different than the Barnstormer at Magic Kingdom. More rides in the Junior Thrill Secret area, the treetop hopper, the little balloons, and uh, the funnestly named ride is the Little Double Coaster. Now, when they opened the uh, the Jersey Double Coaster, this ride used to have a, a Looney Tunes theme over by where the roller coaster is. Well, they moved it over here, and if you're not tall enough for the Jersey Devil, you can ride the Little Devil, and that's just cute. Over by Kingdika, there are some animal attractions at Great Adventure, including the Alibra tortoises. And uh, these guys live a long time. This is Fred, who is in his 90s. Look who's coming through door number one. It's a California sea lion. Why are we so excited? Oh, well, they're probably fishing that bucket. Yeah. Ah, sea lions are cool. Sitting oh so peacefully is Great Adventure's Cheetah. Now Six Flags Great Adventure does have a massive drive through safari, which we're gonna do in a little bit and put that in a different video. But in the main park, you can hang out with this cheetah. 
get from the middle of the park home to the wonderful carousel, the fanciful Yum Yum Cafe, and the teacups, and you're trying to get over towards El Toro, the best way to do that is you cut through the arcade. It'll save you time from walking all the way to the boardwalk, or out to the lake, and you get that little bit of air conditioning. Now this tip only works if you don't get distracted by the arcade games and give Six Flags more money. It's uh, very hard for you. It is, they've got cranes. I do enjoy my crane machines. See, and through the arcade we go. Then you exit over here, and you are that much closer to one of the world's best wooden roller coasters, El Toro. The boardwalk area, the Twister ride is not operating today. A maintenance guy is working on it. I do love how it's named Twister and then it's sponsored by Fix. Yep, um, this is one of the last remaining Hus Top Spins in the country as well. And unfortunately, it's left something sad. The old parachute drop ride. It, uh, it permanently closed earlier this year. And uh, there's a sign out about how it is, you know, they're closed for future enjoyment. But uh, I, I, I hate when parks do this. They close a ride and then they just kind of leave it there to rot. That always like makes me feel sad, especially when it looks like it could run. Like, they didn't even take the ride carriages off. Over by the log flume is Bugs Bunny National Park. Another one of the areas for the little ones. A tall balloon ride. And I like how Daffy Duck's on top. It's also a little kid's carousel. I like how the it's like horses, but then there's Looney Tunes on the top and posters of Looney Tunes shorts behind it. There are some interesting photo backgrounds here in Bugs Bunny National Park. Along with a Bugs Bunny themed airplane ride. And I do like, I think my favorite ride over here is Porky Pig's camp wagons, the little kid's Ferris wheel. I also have no idea if this happens or not, but we got a sign for family bingo daily at 2 p.m. Molly, how does the Foghorn Leghorn Stagecoach Express rank on your adorable ride scale? I think this is the most adorable. At the park? At the park. Yeah. That's really cute. You ride on a little horse or in a stagecoach. Located by Nitro and Jersey Devil is the Congo Rapids, which is a River Rapids style ride, but not running today. The boardwalk area of the park also has a lot of midway games, as you would expect, on a boardwalk. In the video, I have mentioned the lake a couple times that Great Adventure sits on, and here you can see it. Um, they're getting ready for some 4th of July fireworks next week, but the lake's not really used for a lot nowadays. I remember back in the mid-90s when they used to do a lethal weapon themed uh, water stunt show on the lake, and that, that was that a good time. That interesting. It was. But as you enter Great Adventure, there is a Main Street area filled with candy shops, Six Flags stores, Build-A-Bear, and a lovely fountain. I think this is really cool. Here at the Villains Cafe, they offer nothing but uh, gluten-free options. No, that's awesome. There are some prettier sections to Six Flags, like this area with all the flowers. You got fountains and big trees. I think Six Flags Great Adventure is doing a lot of things really well right now. One thing I really do not enjoy is four of their rides, you cannot have anything in your pockets on the Jersey Devil, Joker, King Ka, and El Toro. And you can't have anything in your pockets, no phone, no keys, no wallet, no nothing. And they all have to go in a locker. But unlike other theme parks, the lockers are not free. So every time you want to go on one of those rides, you got to pay two bucks or have somebody in your party that doesn't want to ride. Or $10 a day. It's still, I, I just don't think it's a good guest service. No, it's definitely not. I think this sign's pretty neat, telling you to upgrade to a season pass so you can go to all the other Six Flags, uh, all of the closest one, and how far away they are from Great Adventure. Ah! In the boardwalk area of the park, they do have a couple of upcharge rides. These people are getting ready to launch 200 feet into the air on the slingshot. You can see this, all this Brings going up, that powers the ride. And they're getting ready, and there they go! That's very high up. Yeah, that's no good Yep, in this area of the park, there's also go-karts over there. The three-point challenge midway game. 
this big gray building there. Well, that's only used during Fright Fest for haunted houses now. It was formerly home to the park's uh, 3D motion simulator. Oh. Lots of rides in there. Uh, it opened with uh, Bright Stuff Mach 1, uh, Dino Island 2 in 3D, where you had to save Tony. There was SpongeBob SquarePants 3D, where the, the one poor fish was allergic to pickles. Uh, during the Halloween season, it was the Elvira one. There, for one season, it was the horrible Fly Me to the Moon simulator. Some roller coaster merchandise here at Great Adventure. Kind of a cool nitro shirt. I really like these. These are my favorite piece of merchandise. Like the uh, El Toro glass that kind of looks like a can of beer. That's pretty solid. King Ka t-shirts. El Toro t-shirts. Some from Medusa. A checklist of all the fun you could have at Great Adventure. Why, Molly? What time is it right now? I think it's beer 30 time. Beer 30 indeed. Where the Ale Works is right by the the fountain in the front of the park, and they've got a, a really nice selection of beer. We're drinking A Love is Love by Evil Genius, but they've got lots of stuff. Uh, you got like your, your canned cocktail kind of things. You've got craft beer. You got giant cans. Like some of that stuff are like massive gas station kind of cans. Ashbury Park, Jersey Girl beers. A really nice selection of beverages. They also do these rum buckets for $26. Now it's Six Flags, so beer is expensive. Our lovely uh, Strawberry Blonde, well, it ran about $15. Did open a bar in the Frontier Adventures area. Those seats would be amazing if they were not in the direct sunlight. Drinking a, a rake breaker from Jersey Girl Brewing Company. But this, I love this. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> There we go. That'll do it for our day at Six Flags. Great adventure. A wonderful day. I think the biggest oh, yes. thing for me was, one, the crowds were very low. I was shocked. Yes, I agree. We were here on a uh, on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday towards late June. Mm -hmm. And it was dead, uh, which is great for us as guests. Like, we waited maybe one train when we wanted to ride in like the front of the back seat of a ride. Yep. Besides that, we didn't wait for anything. We did see some ride lines later in the day. Like, I would have loved to ride the Sky Ride. I haven't been on the Sky Ride in years, but the Sky Ride did a pretty long line. But I will say this park is being run pretty well from like a roller coaster operational standpoint. Everything had multiple trains. trains. Dispatches went really fast. You know, crew is trying to spiel to guests like, hey, this, the gates are going to close in five, four, three, two, one. Get in the tray, buckle your seatbelt. Yeah. And uh, you could tell, like, I, I was shocked. They were that hustling. It is not what I'm used to at Six Flags. And I was pretty impressed by it. The rides are running well. Great to get back on El Toro. Love that Houdini was open. And, you know, a lot of the rides that were closed, you could see them visibly working on. Yes. Like when it was Twister or early in the day, Sky Ride would close. That opened up later on. Yep. Yeah, uh, so, great adventure. I've came here for years. You're running pretty well right now. Look forward to coming back. If you got any questions about the park, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. We're going to go hit that safari.